Hi, I'm Jeff Baust. I teach in electronic production and design at Berkeley College of Music, and I teach Pro Tools classes with Berkeley Online. In this video, we're going to have a look at using Elastic Audio to fix some timing issues in a drum track. Let's have a look. Okay, in this video, we're going to look at Elastic Audio and look at one of the many ways it can help us out in uh, audio production. Uh, in this uh, case, I've just got a simple session here. It's just a band, bass, drums, guitar, and uh, scratch vocal. And, uh, you know, later on, they're going to do some overdubs and uh, cut some real vocals and whatnot. But before we get to that stage, maybe there's just a couple things in the drum performance that we can improve upon and, uh, uh, you know, tweak a few notes. He played to a click, and every now and then maybe things were a little shaky, so uh, we'll just help him out with some elastic audio. Uh, let's give it a listen uh, and just get a sense of what it sounds like here. And so uh, what we're going to do is maybe just tweak a few notes where the performance uh, is maybe just a little shaky in terms of the timing. And I'm going to start here in the intro where um, the uh, kick plays a pattern, boom, boom, and then again, second bar, boom, boom, and again, third bar, boom, boom. And it's this guy right here just feels a little early to me. It's the first bar of the song. And, uh, you know, he's just kind of locking into the, the, the feel with the click track and whatnot. And uh, by uh, bar two, he settles down. But this is just a little early, and it just feels a little nervous. And so we'll just give a listen, just compare this note to the similarly placed notes in the next uh, couple of bars here, like so. And one more time. Listen for that guy right there. And it's just a little early and it feels just maybe a little nervous and then it settles down. So what we want to do is move this kick strike back in time. But I don't want to only move the kick drum track audio because that will put the kick drum strike out of time alignment with the other kick tracks. So I'm going to actually do some time stretching across the entire kick tracks, all of them here. There's a, quite a few of them. So I've made a group here called Kit Edit and all of the kit tracks are a member of this group. So I'm going to put one of the tracks in an elastic audio mode. And these are the different analysis and time stretching algorithms to choose from. Rhythmic obviously would be a good choice for the kit. And all of the tracks are now in that mode. Now very quickly on the screen, elastic audio ran through all of these tracks and it analyzed where all the transients are. And I can actually see that analysis if I want to. Now that I have these tracks in an elastic audio mode, I can change to analysis view here and see the actual elastic audio analysis. These are all the different uh, transient markers that Pro Tools found. Now I could use these for certain things. If I wanted to, for example, just hard quantize all of these drum strikes to a quantization grid, this is what Pro Tools would use. I don't want to do that, of course, because that's probably going to take the musical feel out of the performance. So I might use these to guide me, but I'm not really going to do much else with them. I'm just going to manually insert some warp markers and then move them around to stretch the audio or time compress the audio uh, and do some edits. So here, what I want to do is just move this audio just a little later in time. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in around it a little bit here. And I'm going to put a warp marker right here where there's an analysis marker. That's what this line is. And with the grabber tool, you can see when I get right over it, the icon changes to a, a different icon here, and it puts a, a warp marker right there where there was an analysis marker. If I wanted to put a uh, warp marker somewhere else, I could either double click here with the uh, a grabber tool if I wanted to, or I could instead just use the pencil tool and drop one in that way as well. Now, from here, if I were to just simply take this warp marker and move it later in time, because that's what I'm trying to do here, it's not a great idea. As you can see, all of this audio is going to get time compressed, all of this audio time uh, expanded. And so that's not really a, uh, a, a good plan. What I need to do is first anchor the audio before and after the thing I want to move. And so I'm just going to go ahead and drop in a few more warp markers. And I can use the pencil tool for this if I want to. So I can say, well, there's a snare strike here so maybe in the tail of the snare strike I'll put in one of these uh, warp markers and then before the next hit here in the hi-hat or maybe even just right before it here 
I'll put another uh, warp marker. And so the idea is now if I move this audio just a little later in time, this audio gets time compressed, this audio gets time stretched, but this audio and this audio remains untouched. If I don't like where I put these warp markers because I have the grabber tool selected here, I could hold down control or start depending on if you have a Mac or a PC. Then I could say, all right, well, I can just move them around in time if I want to. And when I think I have them in a good place, I just need to grab this guy and I'm just going to move him a little later in time, like so. Now, I'm not necessarily thinking, well, I need to line it up to some kind of musical grid value. I'm going to place it not by looking at a grid. I'm going to place it by listening to the music and deciding uh, if it feels pretty good to me. So here it is now, just a little later in time. Here's where it was. I'm going to hit undo. Here's where it was in the original performance. Just a little ahead of things, maybe just, again, just a little nervous in here. It's just a little later in time. It feels a little better. I'm tempted to even slide it just a little later, but I kind of like it where it is because it is the first bar. It's got some energy to it and like so. And this is the kind of thing that we do quite often uh, in working with drums and that sort of thing is not to just line every kick strike and every snare strike up to a grid value, but, you know, maybe go through and say, well, it's a really good performance, but this was a little early. I can just nudge it. That other strike was a little late and I can nudge it and that sort of thing. When I'm happy with uh, my results, what I can do is I can say, well, let's just turn off Elastic Audio and Pro Tools will say, well, what do you want to do? And I can say, well, let's go ahead and just commit to what we've done here. And it will just bounce all of this audio with that Elastic Audio change. And that'll take a bit. As you can see, it's rendering this stuff. And when it's done, there it is. So now I have no more elastic audio happening, but I have now audio where this bit of audio has been time stretched here and time compressed here to move this kick strike a little later in time across all of these tracks. So that's a little bit about using elastic audio to do a little tweaking to a performance. It could be drums. It could be a bass part. It could even be a vocal where, uh, you know, a syllable or a word is sung a little early or a little late. And that's elastic audio.